welcome. What a wonderful day on this dreary, rainy third Sunday of Easter. Well, we're glad you're joining us by Facebook Live or by YouTube later on. I can't see you, but it's wonderful that we are gathered together in our own spaces with God and our spirit, the Holy Spirit, with us. Let us gather in worship. Let's join in singing together. Halle, halle, halle. Capri, I hope you're out there ready to sing.
Sunday of Easter, I hope that you will join me in our call to worship. Jesus walks with us from Jerusalem to Emmaus, from Vermilion to Cleveland. We journey with Jesus on the road. Jesus travels with us on Lake Road, and yet we could not recognize Jesus until, until we, we broke, broke bread, bread together. together, until we shared some casseroles and homemade cookies. At once our eyes are opened and we say, Oh, our, our hearts, hearts were, were burning, burning for that familiar voice. voice. Christ is risen. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Praise God. Alleluia. Let's sing Christ the Lord is risen today. This week, I hope that you will all listen, but I'm going to speak to the children. We learned this week that the school buildings are closed for the rest of the year. And we know, and I know, I, I'm assuming that children as well, that I'm missing my friends. I'm missing seeing people that we see all the time. I'm missing seeing my sons and my daughter-in-law and my stepdaughter and stepson and son-in-law. It's sad that we can't be together. I'm missing seeing them. So we find other ways to do that. And I know with school, having to do school at home, that it's hard. But one of the things I want us to know is that there are many ways that we can share and be together. You could draw pictures and write letters and send them to people that you are missing. You can call them on the telephone or figure out a way to do some Zoom or FaceTiming. That's how I talk with AJ and Andy and Miranda most of the time is we FaceTime so that I can see their faces so that I don't miss them so much. Same with my dad who lives in a nursing care facility that we figure out how to video with him so we can see the smiles. I know that, I, that you can see me, but I can't see you right now. So Take a picture and send it to me. Doing something that you really like to do. Have your mom or your dad text it to me or Facebook message it or email it to me so that I can see your smiling faces. See how much that you've grown in the last six to seven weeks. I know that it's gonna be a while that we can gather together in the sanctuary. So be safe, wear those masks so that we keep others safe as well as ourselves. And smile and know that I miss you and love you. Know that God does too. God loves you so much. So let's share those greetings, those pictures, those fun things that we are doing so that we can share it with others. Thanks be to God, amen.
Amen. I've been asking different people to read the scripture. And so today we have Sophia Flemister that's going to share from the book of Acts. Listen for God's word. Acts 2, 36 through 41. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brother, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. One of my most favorite songs is Every Morning is Easter Morning by Avery and March because it helps us remember that every morning is Easter morning. So will you join Jeff and me in singing? Every morning is Easter morning. scripture lesson today comes from the book of Luke. It is the story of the road to Emmaus. It is a story that brings hope to us all. Hear are these words from the gospel of Luke. Chapter 24 verses 13 through 35. That same day, two of them were walking to the village Emmaus about seven miles out of Jerusalem. They were deep in conversation, going over all these things that had happened. In the middle of their talk and questions, Jesus came up and walked along with them. But they were not able to recognize who he was. He asked, What's this you're discussing so intently as you walk along? They just stood there, long-faced, like they had lost their best friend. Then one of them, his name was Cleopas, said, Are you the only one in Jerusalem who hasn't heard what's happening during the last days? He said, What has happened? They said, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene. He was a man of God. A prophet, dynamic in word and work, blessed by both God and all the people. Then our high priests and leaders betrayed him, got him sentenced to death, and crucified him. And we had our hopes up 
that he was the one, the one about to deliver Israel. And it is now the third day since it, had, since it happened. But now some of our women have completely confused us. Early this morning, they were at the tomb and couldn't find his body. They came back with the story that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of our friends went off to the tomb to check and found it empty, just as the women said. But they didn't see Jesus. Then he said to them, so thick-headed, slow, so slow-hearted, why can't you simply believe that all that the prophets said? Don't you see that these things had to happen? That the Messiah had to suffer and only then enter into his glory? Then he started at the beginning with the book of Moses and went on through all the prophets, pointing out everything in the scriptures that referred to him. They came to the edge of the village where, where they were headed. He acted as if he was going on, but they pressed him. Stay and have supper with us. It's nearly evening. The day is done. So he went in with them. And here is what happened. He sat down at the table with them. Taking the bread, he blessed and broke it and gave it to them. At that moment, Open-eyed, wide-eyed, they recognized him, and then he disappeared. Back and forth they talked. Didn't we feel on fire as he conversed with us on the road, as he opened the scriptures up for us? They didn't waste a minute. They were up and on their way back to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their friends gathered together, talking away. It really happened. The master has been raised up. Simon saw him. Then the two went over everything that happened on the road and how they recognized him when he broke the bread. Thanks be to God that we have these words, this story of hope for us today. Amen. <clears throat> I hope you have your communion gathered because in the middle of the sermon, you're go we're going to join together in this special meal. Let us pray. O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. A few years ago, while on a weekend retreat, a group of recent high school graduates were sharing pizza. They were telling stories about who had mentored them in their faith. And one young woman began to speak of her grandmother, her grandmother who had recently died, and she was talking about how Thanksgiving at her grandmother's house was so important to her and how they always had that, and losing her sense of time, she just continued to talk on about how this was so important, this time of Thanksgiving with family. Then the other young people gathered around, gathered around her too, and they began to offer their stories and similar stories of their faith and who had been with them, how they had felt strong and loved and free. And then as the time and the evening went on, they began to feel less worried about what was beyond high school and what their next steps were going to be. On the table with the pizza was the bread and the wine, and they were gathered around this table as they told their stories. And then the group shared the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist. And many had a sense, a special sense in doing so, that they were in the midst of a communion of saints gathered with them. One, so, one young person said, I never knew that pizza could taste so much like turkey. The risen Christ had appeared. Two people are walking together. You can see from the way that they're walking that they're not happy. Their bodies are bent over and their faces are downcast and their movements are slow. 
They're not looking at one another. And every once in a while, they utter a word or a sound, and they, those sounds just seem to vanish, useless sounds. They are following the path, but they seem to have no goal. They are returning home, but it no longer feels like their home. They simply have no other place to go. Home has become empty and despair-filled. They are having a hard time remembering how their lives had been changed by that friend who had radically interrupted their daily routine. They had followed a stranger. They had left their villages. They had discovered a whole new life of forgiveness and healing and love. They had been changed. <clears throat> then, as they're walking along, this stranger joins them on the road. And he asks them why they're so downtrodden. Clearly, they are surprised and flabbergasted almost, that this stranger has not heard what happened about why they're so forlorn and desperately, desperately sad. And that stranger that's with them, everything becomes different. Something happens. The stranger begins to talk. He has listened to their story, and now they listen to his. His words are clear and straightforward. He speaks of things that they already know about their long past, about their history. It's an all too familiar story, but it's like they're hearing it again for the first time. Never did the stranger deny what they had told them. But the stranger did say that their loss would create something new. The stranger began to give them hope for something new. Home became a place to go, to grow, to change, to be. Nothing was the same and that was okay. That was even good. And the fact that it wouldn't ever be the same again, that was good too. Their sadness was part of a larger sadness in which joy, joy was hidden. The stranger didn't tell them that the death they were mourning wasn't real. He did tell them that as they had been complaining that th about things as they weren't as they'd always been, about their losses, about having to stay at home, and wear masks, and stay safe, and nothing was as it had been. He said as long as they were complaining, they couldn't see, or maybe wouldn't see, the newness, the joy, the hope, the change, unless they opened their eyes. Unless they, we, remember that Jesus is here helping us, changing us, calling us to new ways to be the church. That stranger had given them a sense of direction. Going home has become a necessary shelter, a place, a home where they need to be, a place of welcome, a place of safety, a place to open themselves up to what they can do to recognize and receive guests. Receive guests. Hmm. Well, by Zoom calls, by FaceTime, by house party, by telephone. A place to see and be with friends and family in a new way. A place to continue the conversation that had been started on the road. A place to have their eyes open. And as they brought out the meal, their home becomes the risen Christ's home. The guest becomes the host. 
The one who was invited now invites. The meal is simple, so ordinary, so obvious. What else can you do when you share bread and wine with your friends? You take it, you bless it, you break it, and you give it. This is what the bread is for, to be taken, blessed, broken, and given. Nothing new, nothing surprising. It happens every day in countless homes. It belongs to the sense of living. And so the bread is broken and shared. Take, eat, enjoy. wine is shared. And their eyes are open. And our eyes are open. Maybe Maybe we have forgotten this simple human gesture of eating together. One of my most favorite times, or a time that I really like, is when we gather with friends to eat, to have supper, to eat together, to gather around the table, to chat, to break bread. Not that I like doing the cooking, and I hate to cook, so these last few weeks have been really challenging. But to gather together with friends, to tell stories, to listen to one another. I know it's challenging to do that right, now, right now, but it's happening. People are setting up Zoom meetings or house party or FaceTime or telephone calls. AJ was telling me about how he gathered with his college mentor, professor, and his wife, and a couple other friends, how they prepared the meal. And they had a conversation around the table with pictures. I know that the la this last week, we gathered with my family from Connecticut by Zoom and the stories that we told, or with some seminary friends where we sat around the table and we looked at one another on the screen and we laughed and told stories and shared a beverage and had a meal. So as we break bread, the risen Christ is among us. Communion, Eucharist, is one of the most ordinary and most divine gestures imaginable. Gathering at the table. This table of love and hope, where we eat together, we are saying, be my guest, be my friend, my companion, my heart, be a part of my life. Communion creates community. Being at the table, eating is a time when we know that we are loved, that no matter what I say, I am listened to. It's a time of relationship, of covenant, of love. It is sacred. Eating together is important. And in eating together, I'm talking about every time we gather to find sustenance, breaking bread, eating chips, cooking out, sharing food, sharing drink, in person or over the internet or the phone. Strangers become friends. Friends become family. Community is created. It is sacred. I invite you to spend time at the table with Jesus and with one another. Thanks be to God. Amen. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On 
either side of the river is the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit in each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. The healing river flow through me, wash away this pain and show me what can be. Lay my body down beneath this tree And let me rest here in the shade so quietly The whispering water will clear my head The falling leaves of many colors for my gather this day, dreary as it looks outside with the rain that comes and the wind that blows, but knowing that we are blessed, that we are held, that we are loved, that we are fed. Oh God, I know that there are many who struggle this day, struggle with knowing if their jobs will still be there, struggle with knowing their jobs have been lost struggle with trying to do school and work and feed the family and be together all the time. Struggle with knowing if I'm really ill with COVID-19 or if it's a cold or allergies. Struggle with knowing whether I should wear a mask and look funny or I should keep people safe to wear that and when I wear that mask. Oh God, there is much on our hearts this day, but our eyes are opened because we have received your love. Our eyes are open because we have eaten together. Our eyes are open because we are loved and blessed and held together with your spirit blowing through us. Oh God, hold us this day. Send your healing power upon those names that have been written and the names that our hearts know, knowing that you will hold
hold them and each one of us with grace and love and mercy. So we pause now, O oh God, in silence and in hope, in love and in grace. filled with your spirit. Healing river flow, flow through us as we gather to say the prayer that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Offering. Giving to God the treasures that God has shared with us. So please continue to give your offerings, your treasure, to offer them to God. You may send them through the, as a letter. They come to the church and we are collecting and getting our mail. You may send them through the internet. Go to our website. And soon you will be able to send them through a new site. But let's gather and let's give our offering, our treasure to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Christ, all creatures here below. Praise Holy Spirit, Comforter. One God, triune, whom we adore. We gather to sing, Open my eyes that I may, I may see. The piano that you've heard today has been Corey playing as he sends me what I ask and we put it together. So let's join in singing, Open My Eyes. just realized that the candle was here, but we forgot to light and share the light of Christ. So I invite you to light your candle if you didn't and to keep it lit. 
to remember this light of Christ that shines within us as we open our eyes at the table, as we open our eyes as we talk to one another, as we open our eyes because God is with us. Share this light. Share this love. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the Spirit be with us always, now and forever. The light of Christ that shines, shines deeply, shines within us all. Amen.